Hi everyone, welcome back to another interview series. My name is Meher from Newfoundland and Labrador. And today I have the privilege to interview Steph Gillens from Calgary. Hi Steph, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing great, thank you for being here. So Steph uh, is a career coach focused on helping multi-passionate professionals embrace their authenticity and design a career they love. Having had 32 jobs in 15 years, Steph mastered the job search process and gained valuable insights into how to align passions with career path. After being laid off from what she thought was her dream job in 2020, she starts at a resume writing and career coaching. Since then, she has helped over 1,000 people discover their purpose and create a career story that truly reflects who they are. So, Steph, my first question for you is, you have read or and you have uh, seen so many resumes. Here we are in 2024. What top three uh, resume tips you can give to job seekers who are entering to the job market? Yeah, absolutely. So my tips will be a little bit outside of the realm of normal tips. Mm -hmm. So some people would give tips on formatting or content, but mm -hmm. all that information is out there. Yes. What I'm going to give tips on is a little bit different. So my first tip is to not worry too much about the applicant tracking systems. Yeah. So applicant tracking systems are definitely a huge part of the application process. And you do need to optimize your resume for ATS. But what people don't tell you is there's like 300 ATS systems. They're all a little bit different in how they evaluate resumes. Yeah. And there's not one size fits all when it comes to ATS. So all the fear mongering out there around ATS is usually a sales tactic mm -hmm. and not really truly something we need to be that stressed out about on a regular basis. As long as you're including keywords and you know, you're know you reviewing the job posting and not submitting generic resumes, you're gonna do really well in the ATS space. So that's my first tip. Yeah. My second tip is not to stress too much about your resume. There is a point when your resume gets too good enough. So including accomplishments, including keywords, yeah. making sure it's one to two pages, you know, keeping consistent formatting, all those things are really good. Yes. But when you're sitting with your resume for three, four weeks, and you're like, hmm, I'm wondering about this word, maybe I should switch out this word for another word, or maybe I should reword this one sentence because I don't quite like the way it sounds. Yeah. If that's where you are, and we can all relate to that, you are procrastinating the actual process of applying for jobs. Yes. So um, I always, I encounter a lot of clients who are like this. And at some point you need to just start applying for jobs and see where your resume lands in the job application process. So, you know, resumes are not the be all end all of your job application and they are, but they're a very helpful tool. And so spending, you know, tons and tons of time editing specific words or sentences is probably mm -hmm. not providing as much value as it could to your job search. Yeah. And my third tip is what I always talk about is breaking the rules. So out there, you're going to see like you need to have an intro paragraph, a set of skills, accomplishments, whatever. But it's time to, you can go ahead and break those rules. I mean, I have worked on resumes where people have been stay at home parents for 10 years, where people have large career gaps, where people are transitioning from, you know, one industry to something completely yeah. different. And we break the rules to make sure that their resume aligns with what the hiring managers mm. are looking for. Mm. And so just because the rules out there tell you to do it one way, you only know your experience best. And so definitely focusing on what you think will fit best for the, for your experience in the industry you're going into is going to benefit you. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And especially it's tailoring each job, each resume to each job, you know, even though if let's say it's the same customer service style, but each job is different, they have different qualification and it's making sure that accomplishment is there. But in terms of, we know that as recruiters, they read a resume and then they will check the LinkedIn account of the person. Do you think that it will should have same information, but we know that on LinkedIn, you have more space to add more, let's say stuff or accomplishment. What are your take about what to put where? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So um, I always say that, you know, your resume is formal, your cover letter is semi-formal and your LinkedIn can be more casual. Yeah. So it's an opportunity for you to show, you know, showcase who you are, share mm -hmm. a little bit more about your career story. How did you end up to where you are now? Why are you excited about this topic? Yeah. If you're if you are in career transition, you know, why are you looking to make this change? Because a lot of the times hiring managers will be like, hmm, you know, that's a different background that I'm yeah. used to seeing. And they might be looking for why. And so when you then they navigate to your LinkedIn profile, that can be an opportunity for you to share the, share your story and explain a little bit more about who you are. Mm -hmm. And I think the LinkedIn is a great opportunity to share a little more of your personality as well. So, you know, what are some of the things that you're into or what kind of, you know, leadership style do you tend to gravitate towards? Mm -hmm. Different things like that so that a hiring manager can paint a picture of who you are and if you would fit in well with the team. Yeah. Um, but overall, I do think that the personal branding should be consistent throughout. Um, so I think that in terms of your focus on your resume should be similar, mm -hmm. obviously, in your cover letter, as well as your LinkedIn profile. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I've worked with people who have a side business and then they're also in the job search yeah. and their LinkedIn is focused on their side business. And what I actually recommend when you're job seeking is to change your LinkedIn profile to be focused on the jobs you're applying for. And then once you secure that job, you can then change your LinkedIn back to your yeah. side hustle or figure out a way to combine both of them so that they, um, you know, uh, how you kind of talk about how they contribute to each other yeah. and how, you know, your side hustle might benefit a hiring manager to showcase mm -hmm. different skills that you might have. Yeah. Um, so it's really important to maintain that um, same branding yeah. across your documents. Those are great tips, Steph. Thank you very much. So for the audience listening or watching for the first time, I'm going to have Steph a couple of questions and I'm going to post them on a daily basis. Kind of a journey with us. You can like, share and comment the whole week. So tune in next time for another great question with Steph.